Beethoven Pathetique Sonata. Make sure that you have listened to the music with the YouTube recording, the link for which is given under this video. There's a score with this recording. And once you finish watching this, go through the mind map again, there's also a link for that. Melody. The music of the slow introduction is based on a short six note motif heard at the beginning. Da 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 da. da. This is used as a basis for most of the introduction. It's sometimes reduced to five notes and sometimes with the second last note rising instead of falling. Listen out for these. There are a number of scalic passages, such as the descending chromatic scale at the end of the introduction. The first subject theme from bar 11 of the Allegro is built on an ascending scale of the tonic key C minor. But with a major third, and notice the distinctive augmented second from A flat to B natural. Da 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 A flat B and so on. Melody lines also include arpeggios, broken chords, uh, and these are to be found, for example, in bars 29 to 30. There are ornaments. An important feature of the second subject in particular. There are achacaturas at bar 53, mordants shortly afterwards, and trills just before the recapitulation. That means where the main themes come back again after the development section. Rhythm and meter. The introduction is marked grave, very slow. The time signature is in common time. The dotted rhythm is a an important feature of the piece. Da, 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 da. In bar one, for example, there are some very rapid notes, including septuplets, 128th notes in bar 10. Anyway, simple, sorry, not simple, common time. In alla breve time or cut time, a fast two in a bar, this is the tempo of the main Allegro di Mon Molto e con brio, very fast with vigor. Right, so the introduction is in common time, that's four in a bar, whereas the main Allegro is in two time, that's alla breve time. The first subject is continuous quavers in the accompaniment. Deba, 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 deba. Tremolo is another word that's relevant here. And staccato crotchets are important in the right hand. Strictly speaking, that's not rhythm, that is articulation, which is uh, up here. Dynamics. Mozart and Haydn had started to use dynamic markings, but Beethoven was one of the first to make extensive use of all kinds of dynamic possibilities. This sonata has frequent crescendos, diminuendos, and numerous other performance markings. Uh, context, I'm not going to read this, but there's something about Beethoven there. Sonata form and the pathetic sonata. You can look them up yourselves. Articulation we've mentioned to some extent. Texture. Uh, in the slow introduction, there are many passages of homophonic chordal writing, for example, bar one. And the right hand sometimes plays in octaves, for example, bar five, that's with repeated chords underneath. The second subject uh, is melody in the accompaniment style. Uh, you can also call this homophony or melody dominated homophony. Anyway, in the second idea of the second subject, example bar 93, 
there are examples of two-part music with broken chords. Again, make sure that you listen to the recording with the score. There is a brief passage in thirds where the trills are. Example bars 181 to 187. And there is a long descending monophonic passage in the right hand leading into the recapitulation. Again, listen to all this. Structure. The first movement is written in sonata form, a complex structure used in the first and sometimes last movements of sonatas, symphonies and other works of the classical period. It features an exposition section containing the two main subjects, the first in the tonic, main home key, and the second in the dominant or other related key. By the way, if the first subject is in a minor key, it usually goes to the relative major although in this particular piece it first goes to uh, not E flat major but E flat minor. A subject is a theme, the main tune, or a group of themes, and the exposition, that means the whole of that first section, is then repeated. And it is followed by a development section where the earlier tunes are altered, especially by modulating to different keys. Then a recapitulation restates the exposition, so again at the near the end or also after the development section the first themes are heard again and that's called the recapitulation but with both subjects now mainly in the tonic key so instead of e flat it would now be in c pieces often then end with a rounding off section called a coda so let's look at this there's a slow introduction, bars 1 to 10. There's more to be read there. You can do that yourself. Then there's the exposition, when the first, the first section where the main themes are heard. The first subject is bars 11 to 50. Please read this yourselves. And the second subject is bars 51 to 132. That's much longer. Please read that yourself. Then there's the development section. Hold up there. And the recapitulation. That means when the themes come back. Uh, a bit there. And then there's the coda at the end. Please read all that yourself. Harmony. The music features main, many chromatic chords. That means chords using notes that are not part of the usual scale. Especially diminished seventh chords, for example, halfway through bar one. There are distinctive perfect cadences. That means five, one, chords, five and one. At the end of the movement, there is an interrupted cadence in the introduction at bar six. That's five six oh and the minor key is it is five six use of the circle of fifths bars two four four to two four nine can be heard that's for example c f b flat e flat a flat d g c and use of augmented sixth chords Da, 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 da. Example bars are 30 to 35. A uh, four, I mean, bars 30 to 34. Instrumentation. Well, that's the piano. No other instruments. But when Beethoven wrote this piece at the end of the 18th century, the piano had almost completely replaced the harpsichord as the keyboard instrument of choice for the home and concert hall. Even so, it was still seen as a recent invention and had only started to be used widely around 20 years earlier. There were frequent new developments of the instrument's power, tone quality and sustaining ability. I'm going to look at this here. Forte piano. There's quite a bit there about that instrument. That's the early form of the pianoforte. And then there's something here about the sustaining pedal. 
that was coming into use at the time and was sometimes worked by the knees instead of by the foot as on a modern piano. It is important to note that in the original edition of the music there were no pedal markings, although Beethoven would most certainly have used some kind of sustaining system in his own performances. Range, well there's a very wide range um, and the first main subject has a huge range of two octaves. Anyway, there's no word setting or painting, so let's go to tonality. The key of the piece is C minor. The music modulates to a number of related keys, including E flat major, at the relative major key, and the subdominant F minor. It also modulates to unrelated keys such as E minor at the beginning of the development section. So make sure you listen to the recording of this and then look at this mind map again. The links are below this particular video.